Well, hi, Lighthouse. I hope you're all doing well. Our Truth for Troubled Times devotionals have been building off of Pastor Kim's last sermon on Christian love. And this week, we've expanded on the topic by looking at what it means to love difficult people. Let's first address the elephant in the room. There are difficult people to love. Think of the person you find hardest to love. It could be a family member, could be a coworker. Think about what bothers you, what makes you reluctant to talk to them, what really hinders you from loving them. Now stop. What I actually want you to realize is you are probably this person for someone else. You are a difficult person to love to some degree, at some moment, to some individual. So right out of the gates, let's just all have the humility to admit loving people is difficult because we know how difficult we can be. What hope is there for us? Thankfully, we have wisdom and love from above. We turn to the scriptures to hear from the one who loves difficult people perfectly. And in our brief time together, I want to camp out on 1 Peter 4.8. While these principles extracted from this verse aren't exclusive for loving the difficult, I find that we really need to rehearse them for those people in our lives. 1 Peter 4.8 says this, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. First, when we find it difficult to love, we need to continue in love. It seems strange, but bear with me. The first half of verse 8 reads, Keep loving one another. And isn't that interesting? Peter commands us to keep loving. It's like he's on to us. He knows something about our fickle hearts. When it comes to love, especially with difficult people, it's no problem to do it once. It's not hard to love them every now and then and within limits. We can muster up the strength to put on the good Christian show. You know, wave high, smile, perhaps carry a conversation for 10 minutes. If we're feeling super golly, Maybe even treat them to coffee or lunch. Once you pick up the tab and go your own way, it'll all be over. You've survived the person you found obnoxious or weird. But Peter won't let us take the easy way out. He challenges us to love not only one, one time, but at all times. In fact, to leave us with no excuse, he points us to the root issue. Keep loving one another earnestly. When you hit the gym and pump iron like I do, well, decades ago at least, what happens? It's a miracle, right? Your muscles become taut. After doing some curls, your biceps are stretched to full capacity. And that's the idea here for the word earnestly. That as Christians, our love should be flexed to maximum capacity. Our hearts should be pulled wide towards one another. But we know this must come from the inside out. It does a weightlifter no good to draw the lines of a six-pack on his stomach. He'll just look silly. Those chiseled abs only emerge as the muscles underneath are exercised. He's got to work hard and keep it up. And so the same. In order to love the difficult, we need to accept that this is hard work and for the long haul, not when it's convenient or for a short season. And this is how God forms a loving person not by one occasion, but over a lifetime. So instead of being frustrated by the difficult person in your life, see them through the lens of Scripture. They are not obstacles, but opportunities to love, for your love to be stretched and exercised. Think through those individuals. In what specific ways is your love being challenged? Is it impatience with an annoyance? Is it to continue to serve them when they don't serve you back? Trust that in God's infinite wisdom and love, He has placed them in your life so you might feel the burn of dying to self, exercise faith, and be stretched in love. After all, this is one of His primary goals in His children. After all, this is why Peter starts this verse with, Above all, because love is the crowning jewel of a Christian. As we will study soon in the Gospel of John, John 13, 34, 35, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The love of God poured into our hearts spills over to others around us, even the difficult. How exactly? 
What motivates our strenuous and sustained effort in love? Well, this leads us to our second principle. When we find it difficult to love the difficult, we need to cover in love. Look at the second half of verse 8. Since love covers a multitude of sins. Here's the truth. You and I can't love someone from afar. You got to get up close and personal. With enough distance, anyone can look like a supermodel. But when you're next to someone, that's when you see their blemishes, their flaws. They weren't as pretty as before. Things get messy and ugly. Difficult people are difficult because of their sin and ours. Enter love, a love that covers a multitude of sin. Now this covering doesn't mean we stay silent when we see someone in sin. Other passages in the Bible teach us that there are times we need to gently rebuke someone. When it comes to sin, we are left with two options. We address it in love or we absorb it in love. We admonish and forgive the sins committed against us or we overlook and disregard the wrong done to us. But both coverings are driven by love. A love stretched wide because it is ready to forgive or to incur the cost. So how do you discern what to do? Well, here are some questions to ask yourself. Is this intentional or incidental? Is this something habitual in their lives or is it an odd occurrence? You know, there's a huge difference between someone shoving you on purpose and someone accidentally bumping into you. One clearly needs to be addressed. The other you can probably overlook, ignore. Another set of questions. Is it urgent and detrimental for the long run? Will it have severe consequences if left unaddressed? You know, I don't know much about makeup. You know, there's foundations and brushes and colors and stuff. But I'm sure only a little is needed to cover a tiny pimple. On the other hand, no amount of makeup is going to make up for a missing tooth. You got to do more and fast. Whatever the situation, we need a lot of humility, wisdom, and above all, love. Whether we absorb a minor infraction or need to speak to and forgive a major offense, the governing principle is the same. We do it out of love. We want to restore our relationships so there's nothing between us so difficulties are removed. We want our relationships to be characterized by closeness and love instead of distance and wrongs. Above all, love. Because above all, Christ does this for us. He continues to love and pursue us when we are difficult and stubborn. He covers a multitude of our sins, forgiving us and absorbing our punishment that we might be in fellowship with him and fellowship with one another. No, how matter, no, no matter how difficult we think others are, let his love help you love.